to start, just give me your name and tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm Philip Bergson. When I was an undergraduate, I created the Oxford Film Festival. And before I even went to Oxford, I went to the Venice Film Festival and wrote about it. And I thought, this is the life for me. What brings you to Cannes this year? A passport, newly made by my government, which for 18 months I wasn't able to do because the relevant authorities were on strike. So I couldn't come last year. So this year I've come because it's an event in person. The list of films is more impressive than it has been for many years. And because, as I also am an agent, I have an agency for actors and film directors and so forth, which nearly for three years was doing nothing because of the pandemic. Suddenly I have nine clients, one of two of whom have a film in the market. So that's one of the many reasons why I'm here. What's been your favorite experience at the festival so far? Oh, this year it's very interesting because um, it's been a coincidence of happening to be in some small reception and seeing three or four people that I haven't seen for nine years. I think that's possibly been, so far, the best, uh, the most pleasant side. On the film side, I was very pleased to see, and I did enjoy, the new film of Paul Schrader, which is in competition, called O oh Canada, with the marvelous Richard Gere, who gives a great performance. And why especially Richard Gere? Because in my own festival, Quite a long time ago, Richard Gere received the first acting award ever in his career for a film. And one of my colleagues happened to go to move to live in New York, and he took physically the diploma. We had no money, it was not a prize, it was a diploma to uh, Richard Gere as best actor in a film called Blood Brothers, released by Warner Brothers at the time. And Richard, at that time, was in Broadway in a very controversial play. And uh, my colleague went backstage and gave him the diploma, and he was very touched by it. And I'm so pleased that he's here physically again in Cannes and in the business, uh, certainly a little older, but he's really doing good work in this film by Paul Schrader, and I hope he's in the running for Best Actor Prize. What are you looking forward to throughout the remainder of the festival? Well, now I'm hoping to be able to get to see more films. What I have found not so nice this year, and I'm not the only person, I'm sure, is that although there is a very sophisticated ticketing system on the computer, I'm almost getting no tickets. Unless you log on minutes, seconds before 7 a.m. when the ticket office opens every day for the following days, there's nothing left. This is a big surprise to me. Um, what is your connection with filmfestivals.com? I've been writing and broadcasting on filmfestivals.com since it began. And one of the first uh, editors and owners uh, was in London and was a Macedonian from North Macedonia, the Republic of North Macedonia. And I've seen it go through many hands and I've been very pleased that Bruno Chatelain took it over, a person with a big experience in cinema and also with a, a knowledge of cinema and a love of cinema. And I'm glad it's still going. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think the important thing is to be, uh, be glad that we're all here, be glad you're here. Look carefully because we're still in a difficult era with the possibility of terrorism and theft and so on, such things. But it's a wonderful thing to be able to see cinema from so many countries in a time of political strife. And that cinema, I think, Cinema culture knows no borders. And we're all in the same cinema world. Do you have any advice to newcomers to film festivals? Yes, it's very important that they try to participate in everything. Uh, that they inform themselves or they ask other people who've been and know their way around. And they should try to see, it's not easy. When I first started and I was press, I used to see six features a day which was just about physically possible. The first film in Cannes, it's 8.30 in the morning, which means you have to be there at least 8 o'clock if it's a big movie, otherwise you won't get a seat. Uh, and then every two hours or so, I would see another one. It would work out about six. Now I think that's actually physically not possible anymore 
because thanks to the influence of uh, Netflix, Amazon and such streamers, so many directors are now making films that are three hours and longer. And you cannot possibly see six films a day. So it's better to see if you can. Focus on what you would like to see, what you have heard other people have enjoyed. Uh, and see two or three and then try to go to the press conference or try to have a contact or listen to the people who made the film. And that I think will enhance your knowledge of the film, the business, and with a view to future films. If you are here as somebody who's not only viewing films but you want to become inside the film business, this is a great place to do it, of course. And besides Cannes, which festival would you recommend to the young filmmakers, the next one? Because Cannes is still fantastic but expensive and you don't... Yes. And also it's so huge, it hasn't become too huge now. Cannes is really 12 festivals at the same time, different sections, the market, etc. So, more and more I found, I already found this before pandemic, I mean I found this 10 or 12 years ago, that it was better to go to a smaller festival where you would have more chance to see the films and you would have more chance to meet the stars or the filmmakers. And this is somewhere like, it used to be Carlo Vivari. Carlo Vivari has already now mushroomed into a big uh, machine. Um, Deauville used to be one of the very, very best. Of course, you only saw Hollywood movies, new and old, but all the legends were there and you would never see them again. Now many of them are not with us anymore. Deauville in one week, you could see, physically see, and even if you were lucky, interview Claudette Colbert, Fred Astaire, uh, Tom Cruise, I mean, absolutely. Otherwise, on the charming front, I would look in the festivals in Eastern Europe. So a very nice festival is in a city called Vitola, which is the second oldest festival for cinematography. So it's focusing on cameramen, it's near Skopje, the capital. But they also have every year some celebrity like Isabelle Huppert or um, Victoria Abril and brings a touch of glamour. So I would go more and more to the smaller festivals and as long as you behave yourself and you're not too drunk, you will be better received. They will be pleased to find an English or a French speaker in somewhere like, um, for example, the Leipzig Documentary Festival, which is long before Amsterdam was established, was the most important documentary film festival was in Leipzig. Um, Cognac, I, I remember with a great affection, the first 10 years, Cognac was created only to promote drinking Cognac. Uh, nevertheless, as it was run by the first few years, it was run by the people who created Dorbiel. They managed to have great legendary drinkers from Hollywood, some of whom nearly died during the experience. I remember seeing uh, James Coburn for an interview, not too early in the morning, but he'd almost died because he'd been drinking so much um, cognac and different kinds of cognac and of course fine cognac. I interviewed Robert Mitchum there, well of course Robert Mitchum was a bit more of a world living person so he didn't mind that uh, he might have a hangover. The smaller festivals I think you have more time, you have more chance to make contact and interviews. I would also suggest Berlin, don't you think? Because the, the, well, there's now, the market Berlin, attached. Berlin was always my favorite because it was so organized. It was the second festival I ever went to and wrote about. It was I, I went to the last festival in the summer. When it was in, in the summer. It has mushroomed. I've worked for Berlin. I worked for 10 years on the daily newspaper and also on the selection committee. Berlin, partly because of pandemic, has gone through change of directorship and it's gone, I think, seriously through a lack of focus. Now there is a new director who's taking over immediately now. She was appointed not very long ago. She's American, but she lives in London. And she doesn't even speak German very well. But we're all very curious and very optimistic that maybe Berlin will become again the great festival that it was. It has, of course, had the European film market, which was created there by Becky Probst. There is a new director there, appointed just a few days ago, who is a very well-experienced German producer, and I'm optimistic she managed to turn around the film market. But this idea of having three competitions and focusing on films from the third world and films with people you've never heard of and having a jury that you've never heard of is ridiculous. Berlin particularly is a public festival. 
that sells 400,000 tickets. Cannes is a bit different because Cannes is only for professionals. Only professionals really are supposed to be able to get tickets. Usually on the closing, the day after the close, uh, they give two screenings of the filming competition that won the prize to members of the of, of people who live here, pay taxes here. But normally this is not a place where you can buy tickets. Officially you cannot buy tickets. Whereas Berlin is very much uh, a public festival and orientated towards, it always used to be, I mean under Moritz de Hardell, even under Dieter Kosling, it always had the Hollywood entries for the Oscar because of its timing in February and so Paul Newman would come, or whatever big American films were in competition, they would come for two or three days to the Berlinale. The last few years, they've lost that idea and they want to have little films, but then who can remember which films won the prize in Berlinale in the last 10 years? Whereas if you look back to the heyday of the Berlinale, it had films like The Garden of the Finzi Contini, it had Pasolini's A Thousand and One, Canterbury Tales, certainly won the top award. So of course the festivals have to change as life changes, but I don't think we should be too much chasing the TikTok and the Instagram and the instant generation. The festival is really the only place, should be really the only place where you can see the original version of the film as the director intended it in its original language and its original cut. And that's part of the rules of FIAP specify that. And that's why I think we have to defend festivals and the idea of a feast, a fest, fiesta. The idea now, which is happening so much, everybody's obsessed about diversity and outreach and wanting to put online parts of the festival, whichever city it is, in local provincial cities. It's not the same thing. The Cannes Festival only takes place in Cannes. All right. Thank you for your time talking with me today, and thank you to the viewers for watching filmfestivals.com. You're very welcome.